Good morning. Today, I would like to take the opportunity to talk to you all about challenges. We all face challenges on a daily basis, whether they're small things like learning a new lesson in math or larger obstacles, like parents getting divorced, moving to a new school, or a relative passing away. Everyone has some story of a challenge they've overcome. For me, my biggest challenge started with a tick bite. This happened only two weeks after I moved to Florida from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, a beautiful place that I was proud to call home, but that is known for its pervasive population of deer ticks and the epidemic which they carry. For years, I was a healthy, happy child. I did well in school. I had lots of friends. Life was good. Then, slowly but surely, weird, inexplicable symptoms began to arise. I got sick far more frequently than my friends, had random stomach aches, developed anxiety that was definitely abnormal for an elementary school student, and eventually, I started developing involuntary physical movements. At the time, none of these symptoms seemed to fit together into a clear diagnosis, nor were that severe on their own. So, doctors just wrote it off as stress. However, as time went on, the stomach aches only got worse, the anxiety turned to panic attacks, and the involuntary movements turned to full body convulsions. During the college weekend of fall 2017, my sophomore year of high school, I woke up one morning for an appointment, but despite my greatest efforts, I could not leave the house. I was lying on the floor having seizures, unable to talk or breathe, yet fully conscious and aware of what was happening. This continued for another year, and then on and off for an additional year. I was unable to go to school, or really even leave the house. I was in and out of hospitals, undergoing innumerable tests and procedures to try and determine what was wrong with me. Eventually, I was fortunate enough to get an appointment with some renowned doctors who, through even more lab testing, were able to determine that the cause of my health challenges was a several year old case of Lyme disease that went undiagnosed and untreated. You see, frequently when people get Lyme disease, they develop a high fever along with a telltale rash. Then, doctors know to prescribe the requisite antibiotics and people typically make a full recovery within a few weeks. However, according to the Infectious Diseases Society of America, at least 30% of people don't even get that rash, in which case the disease can go unnoticed for years, often resulting in much more serious consequences, sometimes affecting the heart or, like I experienced, the brain. In these cases, treatment is much more challenging and it can take years before people recover. Unfortunately, I fell into the latter category. My sophomore year, when I was so sick that I was hardly able to walk, let alone leave the house to go to school, all I wished for was to feel better so that I could worry about essays, quizzes, and normal high school gossip instead of this real life challenge that I did not feel I was ready to face. Everyone used to tell me that the way they recovered from challenges was through a positive attitude. I thought that was super cheesy because Although I was usually known for being a super happy, positive person, this did not seem like something that a positive attitude could fix. Nevertheless, I persevered, and I underwent treatment that finally helped me become healthy enough to return to school part-time last fall. I wanted to jump right back into my seven classes, cheer, and extracurriculars, but there was a consensus amongst my doctors, my mom, and Mr. Forrester that I should pace myself and rejoin school slowly. So I only took two classes. And it was a good thing I didn't have too many, to cl too many classes to fall behind in, since I ended up missing school for treatment three out of the five days of the week all throughout first semester. For the longest time, I assumed that once I was able to go back to school, everything would return to exactly the way it was before I left. Much to my surprise, however, Going back to school ended up being almost as emotionally challenging as being stuck at home. Especially when my friends would say things like, OMG, you're so lucky you get to go home early. I wish I only took two classes. And I know they were not trying to be insensitive. 
It was just hard because lucky was the last thing I felt. Still, I continued grinding out my pathetic two classes and going to the doctor until I finally started to feel somewhat okay by spring 2019. Then, the Friday before spring break last year, I went to the emergency room. I got a blood clot in my arm as a result of all the IV treatments that I was doing in order to feel better so I could stay out of the hospital. Ironic, right? Nevertheless, while I was in that hospital that night, I contracted the flu, which ultimately got me admitted to the hospital for yet another week of my life. I hope that would be the end of it. But alas, for reasons I won't bore you with trying to explain, that flu caused me to relapse hard. But this time was different because I had already survived the most difficult year of my life. I already proved to myself that I was strong enough to survive Lyme disease. And unlike sophomore year, I knew exactly what was wrong and I knew that I would get better. Essentially, I got my positive attitude back. And this isn't to say that I'm all better now, that my positive attitude cured me. No, that is far from the truth. I'm still not all better yet, but two years ago, I never would have thought that I would be standing here on Friday, February 7th, 2020, talking in front of the entire upper school about the challenges that I've overcome in the past four years, and doing so without seizures or other symptoms to interrupt me. Throughout the adversity I have faced, I learned who my true friends are, and as a result, I learned what it means to be a good friend myself. On that note, I wish I could thank every person who has supported me. However, I was warned that, like usual, I already wrote far too much for this speech. So I will just say that I remember everyone who texted me during that difficult period of time to check in and ask how I was doing and when I was going back to school. If you were one of those people, thank you. To the original excursion squad, you know who you are. I will never forget the many memories we made over the years, and I sincerely hope we keep in touch after graduation. Also, I'm the reigning chicken fight winner, and I hope you remember that. Next, thank you to our student chaplain. From cheering me on at track meets in eighth grade, to suffering through honors geometry with me in ninth, to our FaceTime marathons in 10th grade, and supporting me through the many changes I faced in 11th, to now, senior year, when you basically just roast me for how bad I was at track, amongst other things. You have really exemplified what it means to be a good friend, and for that, I'm thankful. In addition to my amazing peers, I have to say how grateful I am for the teachers and administration, because I could not have gotten through all of this without their help. At St. Stephen's, we are extremely fortunate to attend a school where the teachers care about us for, believe it or not, more than just our AP scores. And I am confident that if any of you face a major challenge during your time at St. Stephen's, the administration, along with your teachers, will absolutely support you through it like they did me. Last, but certainly not least, I literally do not know where I would be right now without my family, especially my mom. Mom, there are no words to describe how beyond grateful I am for you and everything you've done for me. You've always been the person I turn to in the good times and the bad and that hasn't changed. But over the past few years, I've also witnessed how you are truly my biggest advocate in life. I would not have gotten the care I needed if it weren't for you. I am so sorry for all that I put you through the past couple years. I can't imagine how scary it was for you seeing your only child go through that. You are by far the strongest, most courageous person I know, and I'm so proud to be your daughter. Like I said earlier, we all face challenges. However, the setbacks that I have surmounted have helped me realize how truly fortunate I am to have such an extraordinary family, friends, and to attend such a great school. Additionally, I made some lifelong friends who are also overcoming Lyme disease and who showed me that it's nothing to be embarrassed about. The completely normal people across the country who live otherwise great lives can still get tick bites. Additionally, I have learned the importance of cherishing every good day because I never know how long it'll last. And finally, I learned the importance of maintaining a positive attitude. For, as Winston Churchill so wisely put it, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Although I know our challenges are probably very different, 
I truly hope you are all able to gain something from my experiences and from those of your classmates and peers, as facing adversity together is a lot easier than facing it alone. Thank you.